come to a oh, bright light, bright light magwai. <laughs> Welcome to part two of my uh, store prep series, preparing to open my online store for the uh, gas based line of bass guitars. And in this episode, we'll be going through uh, what I'm doing to prepare to open, getting all the inventory together again, uh, descriptions, all that good stuff. Going to be making little videos for each base, uh, taking some pictures, stuff like that. Uh, also, I'm going to be showing you what is supplied in the entire kit. You know, when you buy a bass guitar, usually what you get is the bass guitar. And then you have to buy a strap and maybe a tuner. Uh, sometimes they'll give you the tools for it, sometimes they won't. But then you have to buy cleaning supplies and fluids and then cleaning cloths. And, then, and all this other stuff that you have to go and buy. And then you need an amplifier, right? Well, I got you covered with all that. Uh, when you buy a guitar, a bass guitar for me, you will get all that stuff. The amplifiers, albeit a headphone practice amp, still an amplifier, has a couple of effects on there. And it plays really well, so stay tuned and join me for part two. This is probably going to be the final part actually before I open the store. So let's get on with it. Getting the uh, pea green gas base Falcon Series 1 active ready. Right now for the store. The, the Falcon Series 1 is notable because it's an inch and a half thick, not an inch and three quarters. It's made of solid oak, that's why oak is kind of heavy but it gives it a nice uh, slimline feel when you're holding it so it's awesome it's a great bass to play I've just been putting some uh, a mixture of uh, boiled linseed oil and uh, a little bit of restoration wood restoration antique oil on the neck just to you know get it from drying out completely and leave that for 10 minutes just to soak in and then wipe off the excess and then after a day or so it'll be nice and healthy wood in there very playable of course getting the thing ready I'm taking off all the plastic like cellophane that were on the pickups for protection and on the pick guard as well polishing it up then I, I will uh, put the whole thing in a gig bag just to keep it nice and clean and safe. Going over it with a nice little handy dandy tool I got from uh, Guitar Centre. It's got a microfiber pad here and uh, like a, a fake horsehair brush on the other side for fine detail work. So I'm just getting out all the little bits of dust and stuff. You know, I will be demoing it, playing it, then I'll clean it again and put it away. But, you know, just getting all the little bits and pieces cleaned up. So it's beautiful, nice and presentable. Take some pictures of it. Demo it in a video, especially for the store. And then put the bugger up for sale. Of course, this is a prototype base. Um, this was the, the second falcon that I made and uh, as such is, is really a prototype but there's hardly any flaws or faults at all with this design this is basically the end design of the falcon um, the other one that I'm going to be putting up actually I made three falcons the, the third falcon is the end design it's pretty much production base and that one will be going up as well this one will be selling for a little cheaper than the other Falcon I'm going to put up because it was an earlier design, it's not the final design. So I'm going to give a discount on this one, which is awesome. Let's make sure the LEDs are working, that's fine. <coughs> yep, giving an okay there. Okay, get it spruced up, get it ready to go out the door, hopefully. Oh, so it's a very busy Saturday, the 22nd of August, 2020 today. 
much to my Chanagrenenin and or whatever the word is, Schneegren. Um, I'm going to be selling my scorpion because I have the templates right up there. Oh yes, I do, and they're all studied, everything down to the T. This is my prototype scorpion. It's not going to be a main line, as I said, my main line is scarab and oh look, trash can, uh, scarab and falcon. The scorpion's a one-off right now, but I loved building this base. It's so many challenges in it. So many challenges. Least of which, in fact, most of which was the headstock. And uh, let's pan down here. Oh, somebody said, oh, no, fire. Oh, oh. It's okay, I've got a safety switch there. And there's the pea green falcon. Just... Uh, Letting it settle after oiling the neck there. Switch that on, shall we? Oh, there we go, yes. Mm -hmm. Bright, not so bright. Bright, not so bright. So all that all works. Sounding good. And if we pan across here, there's a Tomcat. Just about ready to get assembled. Just waiting on the headstock to dry. Look at the you know, there's tissue paper stuffed in there like you would stuff in your nostril. Mm, and there's the the back computer. This is my shop computer. It's a laptop with a keyboard and mouse on it. Because it's too freaking small to read for me now. Because I'm an old guy, you know. Some... Uh, stock necks waiting for bodies that I've been building and yes that's a visit around the shop right now <sighs> I'd like to launch next week the store next week I don't know if that's going to be possible uh, I've had several drawbacks least of uh, most of which actually was the weather now we have storms coming in so I don't know if I'm going to be able to take some nice shots of the bases in their natural habitat which is of course Club Tropicana but anyway as I scratch my bum bum uh, let's go across here again oh look shop vac mm, oh shop vac oh look bright light oh oh so the nice thing I love about the Tomcat here is the stacked pot for bass and treble mm, I liked doing that it was Awesome fun. I have oiled this neck. It's rosewood. See the spots there are drying in. I all get sort of wet sanded and buffed down. It'll be beautiful to play and the frets will be redressed. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be so nice to play in this place. I can't wait to play it myself actually. Here's a little shot of the emblem or logo or whatever you need to call it. Is it a tomcat? I don't know, but it looks really fierce. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Hey fool, I gonna get you. So, that's it. Uh, on to the next and let's keep going on with the refurb. Well, it's not really refurb, it's just clean up, set up, making sure the bases are okay and getting them in some nice, tight, air sealed gig bags with some potpourri in there. No, I'm just joking. Um, just keep them in tip-top condition until they get put on the store. And then, you guys that might want to buy one, are rest assured you'll have a beautiful bass guitar and a work of art to play. Cheers. See you soon. Hi. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I'm back. Let me adjust the lights here. There we go. That's about there. Okay. Here's top of the line. This is top of the line. Gazway's Falcon. That's my top line base. And I think you'll know where your money is going when you buy it. Everything's real easy on it. Real easy. Status 
sound, is it? Oh, Fender sound, is it? You know, it's, it's just very versatile. So, it's up for sale. It's extremely loud. So, you know, it's got a good preamp in it. I like to play uh, the pickups sort of blended, but you know, it's up to you what you play. strings on it. sexy, I suppose. Put up a trunk. Super sensitive, super reactive. Uh, if you're an, an accomplished player, yeah, go for it. If you're a beginner, still go for it. I mean, uh, you're only as good as the tool that you're given. So, the right tool for the right job. Find the bass you want and use it, you know. Harmonics are very easy on this bass. You can get jackal harmonics on this. See what I mean? So. My top line bass and it will be going on the store for a lot of moolah. Actually no, because this is a prototype. This is my first perfect prototype so it's going to be 25% off. Well, check this out. 
I got this bass, oh, maybe about 15 years ago. It's a Bryce six string bass. I did make, uh, I put new electronics in it at the time, but I just never could get used to playing a six string. And I thought it would be an awful shame if I just left it out in the cold, so, you know, why not sell it to somebody who really wants to play a, a nice attractive looking six string bass. But it's been in storage forever and it's not in good health right now so I'm going to bring it back to life. All the machine heads are loose and crap. They really, really need clean so I'm going to give them an ultrasonic bath. Okay, we'll go down here. The neck is in superb shape, I'm glad to say. The frets need to be redressed slightly. Yep, and the bridge needs to be taken off and cleaned and the control knobs and I need to inspect the electronics and everything and the whole thing needs to be buffed. So this is a full kind of restoration job I'm going to be doing on this one and it's going to be going on the store. It's not one of mine, not at all. It's still a neat looking bass and it sounds really good still. I, I played around with it. It's a bit noisy, but you know, that's to be expected for it being lying around forever. Uh, it's active. I took the battery out of it and the battery, 9 volt battery, read 6.8 volts. <laughs> so, yes indeed. So, this is all going to get stripped down completely the neck's coming off. Everything is coming out. I'm getting cleaned. Okay. This is going to be fantastical, super duper, really interestingly annoying because I, I am trying to get the store open but you know I want to have a good stock for everyone and a six string base is an option that I think people should have. Okay. So let's get on with it, shall we? Well, holy crap, look at the state of this shit. I mean, really? I know I used to hate six string basses, but it's <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, let's see if we can rejuvenate some of this. I'm going to put the uh, machine heads in first. Two, three, a four, a five. I say X. Okay. In there. Alright, I'm not going to put the bridge in just now. Right, so that's going in the basket. What's in the basket? My brother. <laughs> so, and then we're going to use some of this. CLR. Calcium Lime Rust. Okay, this is like, uh, in here it's like distilled water. In my sonic tank here. Uh, uh, it's plugged in is it? Yeah it is. Freaking plugs loose. Right, so I'm going to put a dash of that in here. Well, more than a dash, actually. Yeah. Right, and then we're going to plunge this crap over in here. Plop. Okay. Sonic baths are awesome, by the way. I can center this a little bit more. Add this off to the side so you can see the crap on this side. And it literally is crap. Literally crap. Right, we'll put the lid on there. Now I'm going to use heat on this. I'm going to set it to its uh, 480 seconds. So what's that? 60 seconds in a minute. Times 8 is 480. So it's 8 minutes this is going to go in for. Right? So 1, 2, 3, go. So that's going to cook there uh, for 8 minutes at gas mark 84 and um, we'll see how it goes, see if we can get this any cleaner. We'll clean off all the hardware, clean up the body, the body's actually not bad. Actually I'll show you something, so I'm, I've never taken this uh, guitar completely apart before. 
And somebody's been in there. Look, somebody's tried to put a shim in there. And you know what the shim's made of? It's made of tape. Actually, there's a little bit of non-compressible material in there, but they've put a piece of tape over it, which is utterly retarded. Sorry, I mean, it's very silly. So I'm going to strip all that out and use some engineered walnut shims uh, to get that neck angle right again. And I'm going to finish off the pocket here a little bit because, you know, it's this is made of basswood. And uh, this needs sealed. I don't want any moisture getting in here. Maybe that's pr pr part of the problem, you know. No moisture getting in here. I'll seal all this off with sand and sealer and a bit of... Uh, Jeez, nice drill work, uh, and uh, maybe some grain filler as well, and uh, we'll get this going. And now it's just time to wait, and I'll go do some of the other stuff I'm meant to be doing to get this freaking store open in time. Okay, awesome. Okay, so what's this then, might you ask? You might ask, but I'm not telling. No, uh, uh, this has been ultrasonically cleaned and brassoed. This one has not. Can you tell the difference? Isn't that fantastic? It comes up brand new. What you do is you get a toothbrush and you just work that brasso. Work that brasso, boy. Work that brasso. Okay. You just keep going, keep going, keep going. Get it nice and polished, you know, and then just take a, a nice lint-free rag and you, ooh, you buff it up, you buff it up. And see, see what happens. Brand new tuning pegs. Isn't that absolutely fine, dabby tostic? So, that's what we're doing now. It's a laborious job, but it's absolutely worth it when you see the end result. I mean, look at that. That's really, that has come out fantastically well. So it's all going to look kind of new, isn't it? Mmm, yes. And I'm going to make sure all it's mechanically sound. And we'll go from there. Looking good so far. Now I'm just, I'm going to put the uh, bridge now in the ultrasonic bath. And see what's what, shall we? Yes. Hey. <coughs> so, this is looking really good now. Um... As you can hear, it's Physics Sunday for me. I catch up with all my physics podcasts on a Sunday while I'm uh, doing stuff like this. What a life. Uh, life's good. Life's good. So you can see, look, this is all polished up and beautiful now. I have the ultrasonic bath on right now. Uh, you can see it probably see it going there. Yeah, there it is. It's going. It, various sundries in there but this stuff is looking great it looks brand new brand new absolutely beautiful I'm very happy with the way it uh, ended up sorry Professor Carroll I'm going to have to pause you right now so uh, watching Sean Carroll of course his tremendous uh, podcast he's doing for absolutely no money at all well He's monetizing them through YouTube. But I get to listen to all this stuff and it's brilliant. And uh, these just look absolutely new. I'm very happy with it. And this six string is going to look fantastic and it's going to play fantastic as well. I'm kind of concerned that a six string bass only has four anchor screws in it though. But we shall see. We'll see what happens there. Looking good, looking good. So, part of getting the store ready is to make sure that all the inventory is in tip-top condition. Uh, although this space has never been played before except for by me uh, for a year and a half, it's still a year and a half old base and it's still been played so therefore it's used, okay? It's a used base. Uh, I'm going to try and get it into mint condition, it's almost there and what I'm going to do is 
I've created myself a little work order for the Scarab series serial number 0002. So it's the first production prototype of the Scarab. I'm going to check the electronics, check the neck, probably repolish it. I'm going to remove all the hardware and do a nice ultrasonic clean on them and buff them up. I'm going to this, the headstock that I have here is an old style logo headstock. I'm probably going to remove the uh, the water transfers on there and do laser engraving on it. <coughs> I'm going to put a new cavity cover on there because this was an experimental cavity cover I was working on. Of course I'm going to put new strings on it. I'm probably going to use See, I use very light gauge strings that most people don't use. So I'm going to put slightly heavier gauge strings on there for selling. Uh, I'm going to sort of give the whole thing a once over, clean wise. And then the nut on the neck, I'm going to use a deluxe brass nut instead of the, uh, the hard plastic or bone nut. I like brass nuts. No well, yes, pun intended, of course. So uh, let's get to it. Let's get uh, getting this base in its brand spanking condition for the store. Cool. Okay. Next up is my line of P bases. Uh, I'm going to be uh, selling two of them initially on the store. Uh, it's the Gas Bass PB1-S bass guitar. Um, custom laser engraved logos. This is serial number uh, 0002 of the P bass line. Uh, three, sorry. This is three. I'm selling them plain white pick guards, but you can actually get a choice of colours. I'm hoping to offer a choice of colours for the pick guards. And right now what I'm doing is I'm just finishing and cleaning up the neck. I built this one about six months ago uh, and put it into storage in a humidity controlled room. Uh, but right now, um, you know, cleaning up the neck and I'm going over it with some feed in wax, beeswax, and let that absorb into this, uh, to the neck, which is. Brazilian rosewood, which is there's no um, uh, environmental issues as yet with Brazilian rosewood, so that's what this neck is finished in. All the other rosewoods of the world, well, there's uh, uh, actually I think there's a ban on export of these woods because they're endangered. The rosewood trees are are endangered species, so. We need to do our best to protect these resources, so that's what we do. <coughs> Switch to other materials, which are m more than suitable for uh, luthiering. And of course, this is the uh, a standard P base shape. The body is made of basswood. The neck is maple, and I think and and uh, yes, it's maple. And the fingerboard is Brazilian rosewood, as I say. It's a standard 20 fret P base, all within uh, Mr. Fender's specs, although it's not an exact copy. Um, there's uh, the usual electronics on a P base, volume tone, and the output jack, and the split P pickup here. As I say, it will come standard with a white pick guard, and also the, the bridge. Uh, ashtray cover protector comes with it but you can take that off and uh, I don't supply the usual P base uh, bridge if I can just show you hold on I'll be supplying a higher mass uh, bridge I'll just show you that right now take these off There's a higher mass bridge right there. 
much thicker and sturdier in design and it has grooves in the uh, the saddle plate has grooves so you get less friction in trying to adjust the intonation and don't scrape the crap out of everything <laughs> you know what I mean uh huh, we've all been there <clears throat> if you prefer to play the bass without the uh, bridge cover on it you just, just put these back in to uh, block the hole and that will stop moisture getting into the base of course now usual <coughs> entry level P bases have a uh, minimal shielding in them they have like a shielding strip here just under the electronics <coughs> on this base the, the whole cavity is shielded absolutely all parts of it are shielded and of course when I go to plug it in you will hopefully hear no noise whatsoever so ok let's put the amp on I can't hear anything that's the amp turned up max <coughs> excuse me so there's no noise at all coming from it and I touch the bridge of course I've got fingerprints all over it now should be wearing my white gloves <coughs> no noise just to prove that the amp is actually on I got no noise at all, none. So everything's working good there. And back to finishing this one off, just to keep it uh, in tip-top condition for going on to the store. When I'm done with this, it will be in a video. I'll make a little video for the store, and then it will be going back into its humidity controlled storage and as I do with all my stock as I'm doing right now if it doesn't sell immediately it gets looked at once every three months and then of course when it does sell I would ask people who are, are buying from me to uh, allow one day before shipping so that I can do a full checkup a full setup and a full recleaning of the base before it goes out to its new owner. Uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. It will be worth the extra day's wait, believe me. There's nothing worse <coughs> than buying a bass guitar, you get it home and it's not set up at all, the, the intonation's off, you know, the neck's not straight, all these things, it's, it's got grub marks on it, stuff like that. You don't want that, you know. Plus, with all the other accessories that I'm going to be supplying, you'll have a full kit instead of just a guitar. So if you want to do your own setup, stuff like that, then you can, you can go ahead and do it. Okay, let's get on. We've got lots of stuff to do. Okay, apart from the bass guitar that you'll be getting, I supply all of this stuff. So, what is it? Well, let's go through it one by one, shall we? Oh, I do believe there's something missing. Hold on. Ha! Ah. Okay. So, first off, we have a microfiber cloth for cleaning, of course. Lay that aside. We have restore and polish solution for cleaning. We have a strap, bass guitar strap. Now remember the bases come with strap locks anyway, so that's no problem. I'll supply you with a strap there. What else do we have in this veritable bag of beauties? Mm, let's see. We have, ah oh, sorry I've got this in my hand, tools required for adjustments. Okay. We have a clip-on tuner. These actually work surprisingly well. 
I'm quite surprised. There's a clip on tuner so that you can tune up on stage, as it were, or when practicing, whatever. Okay. We have a gig bag. A gig bag for free with this. I'm going to give you a little uh, leather patch as well. Little gas base leather patch to do with as you please. <laughs> Probably throw it in the bin. Uh, a little lead there. And another tool for adjustments. Electronics adjustments inside. A pocket practice amp which has chorus and reverb effects on board and it comes with all the cables you need just supply your own headphones to plug into and then that plugs into the base and it's a uh, USB rechargeable so if you've got any USB chargers the cables included I don't include the charger because you know international and stuff so just supply the charger or most outlets now come with uh, USB chargers built into them so you use that pocket amplifier and to top it all off I'll be supplying a folder here as you can see that will contain all personalized documents so this one's empty except for my card right now but in here you can see in here will be instructions on how to set up your base, care and maintenance, circuit diagrams and just general tips on how to look after the damn thing. So that's the full kit that you'll get. you get all this and no base. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. You'll absolutely get the base and you'll get all this stuff with it free. This comes free with the whole, with the bass guitar. I, I'm a firm believer in, you know, all through my life when I bought a bass, I've always had to buy the accessories after the fact. I'm going to give you a head start on all the accessories. So, this is my way of, uh, well, saying thank you very much for the purchase and also trying to stay ahead of the competition, you know? Let's be brutally honest about this, right? Okay, so that's all the stuff right there. And I hope when you buy, I hope you'll have a thoroughly brilliant experience. Obviously, inside the folder here, there's going to be the certificate of authenticity with your name on it and the serial number of the base, so that's that. Almost time to open guys. God, is it apprehension or is it excitement? I don't know. Take care. Hi, uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, in part two, the final part probably of this uh, store prep special edition series and uh, hopefully in a week's time my store will be open for business. Uh, I do have a day job so I will respond to everything as fast as I can. Um, I think I said in the video that uh, you know if anyone buys from me, they are to wait a day before shipping because what I do is I take the inventory out, I do a full setup and clean of the base before I ship it to make sure everything is hunky dory. Okay, so that you know, def depending on volume of orders, stuff like that will take about a day before I ship. So when you order, the day you order, the base might go out the next day, but it will definitely go out the day after. After I've had my mitts on it, with my, well, my covered mitts on it and cleaning it up. Anyway, take care. I'll see you next week. Uh, hopefully with a little grand opening video. And uh, take care. See you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, stay safe as well, right? Bye-bye. Uh,